Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? Hope you're doing great. As always, please check out the description box. All the nice, useful links down there. All kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. But you know what we're going to do today? We're going to... What are we going to do? We're going to talk about the class copy constructor. Now, I want to tell you some. Please, if you can, check out the last video because I explained why. Pretty much, we need the copy constructor. I'll, I'll explain it in this video as well, um, a little bit. But uh, it's, it's good if you watch the previous two, three videos. Um, because I, at least I think they're related. <laughs> you should just do it. Anyway, the copy constructor in a class helps you to uh, deep copy memory, okay? Now, you're probably not going to be needing deep copying. If you're just making basic programs without pointers, without dynamic memory, then you're probably not going to need it because every class in C++ uh, has a copy constructor built in, right? It's, there is a default copy constructor. And that copy constructor, like I said in the last video, all it does is just say equal, equal, equal. All the variables in one object is equal to the other object. Now, that's the problem if you're using pointers. Um, because you don't want two pointers to point to the same memory if you have two different objects most likely you don't want that uh, but the copy constructor actually the default one all it does is just equals 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 now we what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite that default constructor we're going to say hey c++ you suck at this you dumb i'm going to tell you what to do okay so this is how i want this class's copy constructor to work so all i'm going to do is i'm going to create a class um class car maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll create a class car, okay? And we'll have a private, and we'll have a public, and obviously in the public, we're gonna have a car. Uh, I'm also gonna include, um, let's see, std lib, cstd lib. You're probably gonna want this if you're on code blocks. Um, include string. Okay, and CST lib is to use system pause, which we always use. Now, I know it's quite late in the series to, uh, to explain this, but, you know, why not? Better late than never. Uh, anyway, so just use that if you're on code blocks or Linux. Um, and then what am I going to do? I'm going to do a STD string name. So all our thing is going to be is just, just going to take a little name here and then a car car destructor. Okay, now we have those. I'm just going to define these at the bottom here. I don't really need to define this or have this at all. There is a default one for that as well, but we'll keep it. Um, now we don't have a default constructor. I'm going to create that as well. Uh, or actually, you know what? No, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so there we go. There we got our constructor. And everything now the copy constructor is a constructor okay it is one of these constructors it's just we write it in another way now and for the car class let me just show you let me have the std uh, string name okay and then we're gonna do a um, const std string get name const and then we're gonna just define that as well as soon as it pops up boom so I'm just going to do that. And all I'm going to do is just return this name. Okay, easy peasy. So there you go. Um, now we can create a car with a specific name. So let's just create a car. Let's call it um, car1 and give it the name Audi. Audi A4. I don't know. That's just the first one that popped up into my mind. And then we're going to do stdc out car1.getName. Okay, so as all of you should be able to guess by now, this is just going to print out out the A4. Okay, now how long have I been doing this? Okay, four minutes, that's cool. Uh, so there you go. It didn't actually print that out because I'm dumb as hell and I didn't actually set this name equals name. Credits to those of you who actually saw that dumb assery I just did. Uh, so there you go. Audi A4, okay? So let me explain this now. Uh, let's just, let me just do this. Uh, start watch start okay so now the car um, one is Audi a4 
Okay, so the, like I said, every class has a default copy constructor. So here somewhere or in the, within this class when I define it, C++ has a default one for me. So a constructor also, a constructor is only called when this happens, when you actually create it for the first time. When you create an object for the first time, the constructor is called. So if I said, call, if I had a function car1.setName, that wouldn't be the constructor. The constructor is only called when I give it the class name here, the type name, and then the variable name, and then call the constructor like this. Now, what happens if I do a car, car2, car1? So I want to create a copy of car1. And that copy's variable should be car2. I just write it like this. You could also do this, car2 equals, or car, car2 equals car1. That's the same thing. Now I'll just, I'll just, uh, actually do it like that okay so that's the same thing now I don't want you to get confused listen carefully now in the next video or the next two three videos we're gonna talk about the assignment operator this one and we're gonna be overloading it but this is it's not gonna affect this okay this is still not an assignment really this is still using the copy constructor because we're using a constructor this is just a shorthand to use the copy constructor okay this is still not the assignment operator in that sense so anytime you create an object using another object, the copy constructor will be called. And that happens when you create temporary variables in classes, parameters, anything. Okay, so just remember, you can get some errors if you don't have a well-defined copy constructor and you know what you're doing. Okay, so just remember, these two things are the same. But later on, if I already had, if I do this again, car2 equals car1 down here, then I'm not using the copy constructor anymore. I'm using the assignment operator. Okay. So I'm just going to comment that assignment operator and don't worry, don't freak out. We'll be talking about this later on um, as we go along. Okay. And this is the copy constructor and this is the copy constructor. Okay. So just remember that I can still do this because the assignment operator is also by default uh, overloaded here. Okay. So you should be able to do this. If it's not, we'll see, but I'm pretty sure it is. If it's not, we'll see what happens. It didn't complain when I did this at least, so it should it should be fine. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, so let's print out car1.getName. And then I'm going to print out car2.getName. Okay? And then both of those should have Audi A4. Audi A4, Audi A4. Okay? So that worked. Now if I comment this one out, and I just use this one. It should still use the copy constructor. Okay, Audi A4, Audi A4. Okay. So just don't get that twisted. I hope you listen carefully now. Uh, and then what we're going to do now is we're actually going to define the copy constructor. So the way you do that is you say car. And then you say const car reference. I usually call it object. I just say obj. But the important part is to have the car reference here. You don't even need const if you don't want. I usually do it because I don't want to change the car object uh, that I'm sending in since it is a reference. I want to keep it as a const reference so I don't by mistake change the obj uh, ob or the object outside. Okay. So this is a definition or this is a um, this is a header basically function header for the actual car copy constructor. So this is the copy constructor okay and here it is so here it is so now when I run this it shouldn't do anything I think it should it should give me bullshit here it doesn't give me anything okay that's because we told C++ get the hell out of here you noob you dumbass we made our own copy constructor but we're the actual dumbasses because we don't have anything in our copy constructor it's still empty but to actually make it get something we'll say this name equals obj dot name okay that's it and then our copy constructor does the exact same thing as c plus plus default constructor does which in our case is fine because we're not using pointers okay but if we were to introduce a pointer here int uh what can we say um hmm i don't know we'll say whatever int horse Power. Now, this isn't a good example because why would you have this integer as a pointer? Don't think about it like that. Don't think about it 
uh, as as really just oh this doesn't make sense whatever just don't, don't care about that just imagine there is a pointer here okay and it's an integer and we're going to do this we're going to go into your card destructor okay we're going to say delete this horsepower because we're going to be assigning uh, this with a dynamic memory so int horsepower like that and then we're going to say this horsepower equals new int horsepower okay so this is dynamically allocated this is dynamic memory and when you're creating uh, when you're creating uh, uh, arrays and stuff in classes when you're when you're using dynamic memory in classes you're going to probably be using a lot of pointers and you're probably going to have a lot of pointers in player or any kind of thing if you're making a game for weapon maybe you're pointing to a weapon maybe you're pointing to a texture and stuff you don't you don't want all of those things to get mixed up when you make a copy okay now if you're point if you want to point to the same memory location for example texture let's take texture then you probably want to point to a memory location okay you don't want to copy that texture several times that's fine but if you're actually making a copy of it in player one and then you're using the copy constructor and you're pointing to player one's texture and all that stuff is just going to be memory leaks and all kinds of crazy shit so just just think about that so now we have a pointer we have dynamic memory and everything and then when i create car one with a horsepower of 20 which sucks maybe well let's give it 2000 that's some crazy ass audi a4 okay this is this is sick so there you go okay um 2000 horsepowers now what happens when i copy when i use our copy constructor here i'm just going to use this is how c plus plus regular copy constructor would work obj dot horsepower but remember this is okay but this is a goddamn pointer so this is not good this is a shallow copy and what this does is it, it points the new object's horsepower pointer to the other object's horsepower pointer so that's like me taking a piece of your cake and eating it i don't want to do that i want to order my own cake which looks just like yours and i want to eat it okay i don't want to take out of your cake that would suck right you hit the shit out of me so i don't want to do that what i need to do in my copy constructor is something totally different which i'll show you after i show you this error so i run this and then we're going to get a a crash here yeah it crashed because i'm trying to delete something that doesn't exist i didn't i did a shallow copy everything crashed okay what happened was car one has an object okay horsepower with new so i created some memory in the heap with horsepower and that's fine then I created a car 2 with the horsepower as a copy. So this car 2's horsepower is pointing to the same memory as car 1's horsepower, which is 2000. That's fine. But what happens when we close the program? Car 1 is going to be deleted. Then it's going to delete its horsepower. But car 2 is also pointing at the same horsepower. So now that's dangling. Now that's there's nothing pointing to it, right? And we're going to try to delete car 2's horsepower, which doesn't exist. And then that's going to crash the program. Okay. So let me just show you. If I if I do this. Um, const int reference get horsepower. Const. And we're just going to define this. All right. And then we're just going to return. Return dereferenced this please just follow along now okay i know this video is long i'm sorry but it's really important to understand just follow along here so i'm just gonna get the horsepower i'm gonna print this out and i'm gonna do a space and i'm gonna do car one dot whoops car one dot get horsepower all right and i'm gonna do the same thing for car two just copy that same thing for car two and we'll run this okay this is gonna crash but we're going to run this. And both of them have 2,000. Okay. And I end the program. It's going to crash. Um, so let me just show you this. Let's let's close that. So instead of getting the horsepower, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the address to, uh, let's see, the address to this horse. Let me just return the pointer like this. Let's... Uh, Let's do that, int pointer, 
um, and get horsepower. Okay, so just change this to int pointer, okay? Int pointer. What I want to show you is I want to show you the address, the memory location. And these two should have the same memory location now. Yeah, they're at the same memory. This is not good. We're, we're at the same cake. We're eating the same cake. That's not good, even though they're two different objects. So to help you understand that they're two different objects, uh, or help help that come along, what I need to do here is a deep copy. So instead of horsepower, I'm going to do a new integer. Okay, object horsepower, like that. So what I'm doing, I'm making this my my horsepower pointer in the new object a new piece of cake in the memory which is a copy of the value that horsepower of the other object is holding so if i run this now we'll see that there's two different memories locations here see e and f f c they're different memory locations completely different okay and it didn't crash when i closed the program now okay and i'm just going to do that and I'm going to do this as a reference again all right just to make it go back and now we'll still get 2000 out of those so that is why a copy constructor is important I hope you could follow me on this it's really a long video I know it's been a while how, how long was it 16 minutes yeah I know it's been a long time I've been talking a lot but it, it really is a, a complicated subject okay so now I'm going to try to do this, and I'm going to see if this works. It's going to mess everything up. It should mess everything up. If I close that, yeah, it crashed. Because we haven't overloaded the assignment operator, which we'll probably do in the next video. Because here it's fine, but here it messes it up again. Okay, it does the same shallow copy, the default assignment operator. We don't want that. So we'll probably, we'll probably continue on something like this in the next tutorial as well. Uh, I hope you understood what's going on and why you need to do a deep copy like this on anything that is um, on anything that is uh, dynamic memory, you know, dynamically allocated that we're deleting and new and stuff. All right. So just remember that. Thank you for watching. So sorry this was so long. And I hope I hope you can follow through everything because it is it is a very important subject. Uh, but if you have any questions, ask me on Discord. Ask other people as well there. Um, follow Twitter. Drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.